What is going on everybody, Jay here from Maji and Jay. Today we got the unboxing and the quick overview of the new MacBook Air replica that got released in late 2016. And this one has a perfect one-to-one -one body to the original, so you guys must be aware because this can be hitting the market. And even though the box is not a one-to-one, -one, they can change it from time to time and include a box that looks just like the original MacBook Air, so beware. This one in particular is called the Airbook and it comes with Windows 7. I know it's very outdated. I believe you can upgrade it, but now I do have the suspicions that maybe the Windows 7 is corrupted or that it doesn't have the key. So if I upgrade to Windows 10, they might ask me for it. And if I don't have it, I will have to pay for the operating system, something that I don't want to do. They come with different processors. This one in particular has the Intel Celeron, but they come with the i5, the i7. Also the RAM changes because the parts are upgradable inside. You can either change the SSD or you can change the RAM to whatever you like. So that's the cool part about this computer. And later we're going to be comparing it with the Jumper EasyBook 2 that I purchased. And I was planning to bring the unboxing and the review of the Jumper EasyBook 2, but there's plenty out there. So I just decided to take this opportunity and compare it with this replica. So here getting a look at the rest of the sticker, other than the Intel Core i7 being incorrect, everything else is correct. And also you guys can notice here that the memory or the RAM is blank and also the SSD, that's because they can change this manually according to what you ask them. Also the Bluetooth is the 4.0, it comes with Wi-Fi, the LCD is a 13.3 inch, Full HD. Uh, we have a front facing camera of 0.3 megapixels, so it is very, very poor. Don't expect to use this for Skype or anything because it's almost useless, it's super dark and the quality is just very, very bad. Um, also the battery is incorrect, this one doesn't have a 6800 milliamps, it has a 4000 milliamps, 7.4 volts and the color is silver. Then if you look here on the front of the box, we just got the picture of the item and also on the upper right hand side corner we had the ENC logo. I guess this is only for custom purposes so that they don't seize it. On the left hand side is plain, on the other side is plain and also on the back side we don't have anything here whatsoever. I'm pretty sure that the original box doesn't look like this even though I don't own a MacBook Air. Um, I think the original does have Apple logos and I believe it's in white color instead of being black. So here we have the computer. It comes somewhat well protected with this little foam material. And if we remove this, here we can see how thin it is. This is a perfect body to the original. And yes guys, it's made of aluminum. I already confirmed it. So here we can see how thin it looks from the front side. I would say that the bottom side without the screen is about 10 millimeters uh, thick. And the upper side is about six millimeters thick. So it's super, super thin considering that this is made in China. And that also has a built-in fan. So here on the side, you can see already some of the ports. It comes with a regular uh, USB port. We have there the SD card reader, the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and even a microphone. And yes, the microphone works and it has decent quality. If you look here on the other side, you're going to find a proprietary connector. This is for the VGA and also the Ethernet port, something that is quite obsolete nowadays. We do have the HDMI port. We have here a, um, a USB port. This is the standard one and also a charging port there. So that's pretty much all we see around the computer. So now setting this to the side, let's go ahead and check here the manuals. And this is what we get inside of the box. They don't look nothing like the original. And then inside, it's just going to explain how to power it on and how to pretty much operate with Windows, how to charge the battery, and that basically you don't do anything stupid with the computer, okay? We have a software CD. This is uh, Windows 7 and it comes with the drivers as well. This is in case something goes wrong with the operating system, you can always uh, reinstall the system. Now you do need a um, little DVD drive in order to do so. So you must buy uh, you know, one of those portable ones or maybe flash this into a little uh, flash drive and you can connect it to the USB port and install the system again. Also we got here a little warranty card. I'm pretty sure that this is useless since we are in the United States and this is coming from China. So just be aware of that. We do have here a charger, okay? And this is a very cheap charger. This is the information for it. It's a 19 volt, 2.2 amps, okay? And it charges the battery, I would say quite okay. Now the battery at the most will last you about two hours because again, it's only about 4,000 milliamps. So don't expect anything crazy. Then we have here the proprietary adapter for the computer that gets connected to the side and it's going to give you the ethernet port and also the VGA. But again, this is something that I'm not going to be using all the time. And finally, we have the power adapter. Okay, this goes connected to the charger here and then you connect it to the wall and that's about it. It's going to give you about seven foot of range. So it's not you know, very short, but it's not very long either. Then inside of the box, we have absolutely nothing. So now let me set this aside. 
and go ahead and talk more about the computer. Alrighty guys, so now that we got the box out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look on the bottom side of the computer. This cover is removable. All you have to do is just remove all these screws that you see around. Uh, there are no clips, so it comes off right away. And inside you're going to find the SSD. You also have the RAM in which you can upgrade, which I think is definitely a plus for this computer. Now surprisingly, there is a cooling fan on the inside, something that I wasn't expecting considering the thinness of this device. Now, a little bit of a downer is that the battery, again, is at 4,000 milliamps and not the 6800 that they were promising. Now, something like the Jumper EasyBook 2 here that I promised I was going to do a comparison with. Uh, first of all, this one is built with plastic all the way around and it's uh, very easy to scratch on the top. As you guys can notice right here, it does have a lot of scratches and I've been very careful with it. Um, but now, this one comes with the Windows 10. It has 4 gigs of internal RAM. It comes with uh, 64 gigabytes of internal hard drive. Now these are non-removable, so the bottom side here looks quite similar. Now when you open it, it's just going to have a motherboard and a big battery basically, which is 10,000 milliamps. And you can't remove any of the components, something that again is not really good because you can't upgrade it if you want to do so. Now just notice how the Jumper Book 2 does have two speakers on here in the R stereo. They sound a little bit better than on the replica here. This one, the speakers are going to be located somewhere on the back side. So the sound is going to be coming somewhere from this back area here and it sounds a little bit muffled I guess because they are covered and then here we can see that yes this is the model with the Intel Celeron processor the uh, CPU models the 10370U and we even have a zero number on here which is really really nice now here we have also some writings that says designed by Apple in California assembled in China and so on and so forth making it very close to the original product now getting a look here on the side of the computer, we can notice that both of them have the HDMI ports. Uh, now the Easy Jumper 2 does have one port that has the uh, 3.0. Now this one doesn't, which is the replica. We also got there the charging ports, they are quite similar. Now the mic on the uh, Easy Jumper 2 is located on the right hand side. On this one is located on the opposite side. Now the only difference here is that we have a proprietary connector again for the Ethernet and also the VGA. So getting a look here on the other side, we're going to see that this one only has the USB, the regular USB port located on the same location and also the 3.5mm headphone jack. Now something that we don't have is the uh, SD card reader, something that I find very useful on the replica here. On the Easy Jumper 2, the back side is going to measure about 12 millimeters, while on the uh, replica it's going to be about 10, so there is a little bit of a difference. That's because we had the battery located on the back side. Now the front side does get a lot thinner. Like I said before, this one is about uh, seven millimeters here on the front and this one is about nine. So yes, it is a little bit different. And also on the width side, the um, Easy Jumper 2 is a little bit bigger. That's because we also have a bigger screen. I believe that this one is 14.1 uh, inches and on the replica we have a 13.3 inches. So that makes a difference. Um, so let's go ahead and open both of them so that we can look at the inner components here when it comes to the keyboard and also the screen. So this is that 13.3 screen, again with a resolution of 1920 by 1080, so it is full HD. We can also find there the logo, so again guys beware because these things can be sold with the original box and you guys can get scanned out there. Um, also on the upper side there we can see the camera, it is a 0.3 megapixels as I said before. Now something that I do like about this model is that it's completely made of aluminum, so the keyboard feels very nice and also the mouse pad is very smooth. Now here I want to show you briefly how on the Easy Jumper 2 the keyboard kind of bends in every time you press it and also the keypad is glued on there. It's not like the uh, replica of the MacBook Air where it is built with screws and stuff. This one just has uh, adhesive here on the sides and it's just basically connected to the plastic and that's all we have. So if you press really really hard this thing can get pushed in and break. So yes, those are the little things that I don't like about this computer. Now, as I said before, what I do like is that it has the um, upgraded Windows, which is the 10, and also we have you know sufficient RAM, we have sufficient memory just to do the basics on the computer. So getting a look here on the screen, we can notice that the processor inside of the Easy Jumper 2 is the Intel Atom C8300, clocked at 1.4 gigahertz, and on the other computer, which is the replica, we have the uh, Intel Celeron processor, but we're gonna be talking about that in just a moment. Also notice how the RAM is correct on this computer, it comes with four gigabytes and the inner memory. I'm going to try here to use this keypad guys. Let me tell you that this is 
really really bad you know to the point where I have to use my other keyboard in order to get it working or to have a smoother experience here uh, but other than the keyboard I mean in the mouse pad and the build quality is uh, quite fast and it does work well for the most part as you guys seen on other reviews but now what these guys are not telling you is you know about the poor build quality and for $227 I mean for about $100 more you can get something quite decent out there especially if you go into Best Buy my brother works there and you can get you know for about $349 um, you know, a computer with Intercore i3, even Intercore i5, and you can get it with a lot better materials and also a name brand that you guys know, like this jumper brand. You guys have never heard of it, and you can get a Toshiba, you can get uh, you know an Acer or maybe an Asus for a very cheap price at Best Buy, just to give you an example. So here, yes, we can confirm that it comes with 64 gigabytes of internal storage, something that we don't have on the replica. And again, those are the little differences where it makes this computer a little bit better. Keep in mind that the front-facing camera on this one is still very poor at 0.3 megapixels, so it is exactly the same camera that we see on the replica. So just don't count on this camera, guys, to use it for anything important. But now, if you want to use it for basic purposes like Skyping with a family member and such, then yes, it will get the job done, but not with a very nice quality. The battery is only 4,000 milliamps, as I said before, so it's going to give you about 2 hours to 2 hours and a half at the most. And that's pretty much all I have to say guys about this computer. Again, this is not a complete review. It's just basically a little overview and a little comparison here with the Easy Jumper 2 and the Replica. So now let's talk a little bit more about the Replica. So a day and a half has gone by after completing this portion of the video and the reason is that I had to upgrade to Windows 8.1 after Windows 7 was giving me a lot of issues and the reason is that after doing some updates I was getting the blue screen of death, I didn't know exactly what was going on, I tried reverting all the updates that were completed and that didn't fix the problem. So I really got tired of it, I went ahead and flashed the operating system into this little SD card and then installed it directly into the computer and now everything is working like a charm. So yes, we are running on Windows 8.1 and I also upgraded the RAM to 4 gigabytes instead of the two gigabytes that it had before so here I have my little timer I'm going to go ahead and show you guys exactly how long it takes for this thing to start up so I'm going to start it at the same time that I press the power key so here we go one two and three the first thing we're going to find here is the Apple logo of course and then we got the BIOS option together with the Intel logo on the lower right hand side corner the Apple logo of course looks very fake but then after this it goes into the 8.1 boot animation here now we are on the user and now on the desktop so that took about I would say 16 seconds at the most making it very very fast. Getting a look on the back side of each computer we can notice that the Apple logo here is a lot brighter than the jumper logo even though they don't have the same design but a lot of that has to do with the quality of the LCD. Also keep in mind that this uh, metal frame on the back is closer to the LCD and on the Easy Jumper 2 is a little bit thicker and I guess that causes the brightness issues. Even though I will not be providing a review on the entire operating system, I just want to show you here briefly that all the components are working well, like the camera, the Wi-Fi, the battery and such. Let's get started here with the camera. This is the 0.3 megapixel sensor and yes, it is intended for basic usage. As you guys can tell, the quality is not really amazing, but at least it's working and it is there. Also, if we go here into system properties, we're going to confirm the operating system. This is Windows 8.1. It comes with the Intel Celeron CPU, which is the 1037U, as I said before. Now you guys can notice that I also upgraded the RAM so that Windows 8.1 runs a little bit more smoothly. And let me tell you guys, I'm super impressed with this computer. I mean, don't take me wrong. I am judging this computer based on its price and based on what it is basically a replica. We know that some replicas from China are of poor quality. This one is the best that I've seen. And as you guys can tell here, even from the screen bezels, it looks almost identical to the original. So that's the cool part about it. Now, keep in mind that this is always going to run on Windows 8 and there's no way to install Mac OS. I know this is a question that I get on a daily basis, even though it might sound dumb, but yes, I get it all the time when I do replicas for the iPhone and such. A lot of people ask me if I can install iOS, but no, that's not going to be the case with this computer. So here in the bottom, you can see that Windows is activated and everything is ready to go. Now, something that I do need to upgrade is the internal memory. So if you go here into this PC, we can see that right now I have about 16 gigabytes and I plan to upgrade it with one that is either 128 or maybe higher. I'm really not sure, but once I do, I will be providing a tutorial on how to upgrade the SSD and how to upgrade the operating system and such. 
Um, right now, I search on Google for support on this computer and there's barely none, so I'm willing to provide support in case you guys want me to. So getting this out of the way. Uh, the battery, it does last a little bit longer now. I'm getting about uh, almost uh, three hours of usage and that's a great thing and right now I have the brightness at full and everything is at full because I'm providing the video but if you go into power saving mode it can last you almost four hours with continuous usage which is really really cool. The Wi-Fi, I mean, uh, it's great guys to be honest. Uh, sometimes when I'm in my living room it's just missing a bar while my MSI never misses any Wi-Fi bars. But again, this is a replica so, you know, based on what it is, I think the Wi-Fi is doing quite well. Um, also the sound, we're going to be testing it later after we go into the browser, which we're going to do actually right now. I just want to show you that, again, the Wi-Fi is working great. So here we're going to open the browser and now let's go here into YouTube itself and there we go so this is going to load quite fast i mean it's about average to be honest and here is my account let's go ahead and open another tab and now we're going to open uh this website okay dhk.com which is the source of this computer in case you want to know and i believe this one is called airbook okay guys so be careful if any chinese guy tried to sell you a computer make sure that you know you are aware that they exist and I think the one here let me see if I can find it here for you guys briefly I really don't want this video to last that long but here it is it's the 13.3 inch model and it's called Airbook this one in particular comes with about uh, 8 gigabytes of RAM and 128 SSD so the price is a little bit higher as you can tell but they come in different form factors and also if you guys don't want the Apple logo on the back and you want to add your own logo you can do as well which is uh, another great thing that they offer So yes, this is going to be a basic computer for basic usage and again I'm quite impressed that the Chinese were able to replicate you know, the MacBook Air in terms of thinness. You guys can see that this is a very thin computer, it's all made of aluminum, there's barely any imperfections around the body and such. So they did a great job and this is why I decided to bring this video of this replica so that you guys are aware and you don't get scammed out there in the streets. So this is going to be guys for the comparison and the brief overview of this computer. Uh, if you guys want a full review I can provide it just let me know in the comment section below and please don't forget to like this video if you find it helpful. Don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't done so. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys on my next one.